it's friday it's three o'clock so welcome to together unlocked i'm Jude Gosling, Artistic Director of Together 2012, who are bringing you this stream as always as part of our Join In From Home programme. We're going to tell you lots more about the Join In From Home programme soon. But um, first, let me go over to the other end of our long wheeled virtual sofa, all the way to the West Midlands, for some introduction and some audio description. And also, it's Friday, so we're dressing up to go out to stay in. Tell us as well, guys, what you're dressing up to go out to stay in to do. Okay, well, good afternoon. Welcome to Friday. I am Robin Sergener, Business Director at Together 2012, um, and also known as Angry Fish, both for my uh, arts work and obviously some swimming prowess from times gone past. Um, yeah, we're up here in the West Midlands, which is finally sunny today, having been thoroughly miserable um, all week. Um, and our snow person creature finally dissolved yesterday afternoon. Um, so I, I am sat here in front of our lovely warm velvet curtains in the studio. Today I'm wearing a black uh, cap, um, a pair of uh, glasses and a black polar neck T-shirt. And just to let you know, it says on the top of my hat, it's, or the front of the hat says Swim Science. The shirt also says Swim Science because um, I am presenting the corporate front of Swim Science. Uh, and I am dressed up to uh, go out to stay in um, at a coach's masterclass in Florida. I'm going to the home of um, the Gator Swim Club, which is the home of Caleb Dressel, the fastest swimmer in the world ever. And I'm going there to get some coaching trips. Ooh. Uh, hi, I'm Josh Surgeon. I'm also one of the hosts of Together Unlocked, and I am a PhD student. Um, I have long blonde hair, uh, pale skin, and a little bit of uh, facial hair on the sprout. Um, today, I am wearing a royal blue sweatshirt that says NASA on it um, and has the NASA logo because when we finish our coaching conference, uh, in Florida, we're going to travel down to the Kennedy Space Center uh, and go for a tour um, of that as well. Uh, and if you want to do that online, if you go on uh, Google Maps, there's lots of kind of 360 street view uh, images that you can kind of look around that are all over the uh, center. Oh, I was just going to ask you that. So thank you for that, Josh. So I'm Jude Gosling, also known as June 90. I've got a self-styled hennard corona crop. Good thing you can't see it in real life. I've got pale olive skin, green eyes behind black plastic glasses. I've got black wrist braces, silver coloured jewellery. And today I'm wearing a long sleeve, long sleeved black t-shirt with Vivian Westwood and Lee which is obviously the branding on it in red and there's a white design which is pretty obscure anyway and very very obscure if you can only see the top half and I'm dressed up to go to something straight after this that's taking place at the Welcome Trust online a fabulous cool disability arts event and I'm going to tell you lots more about that later in our feature, Something for the Weekend, which is coming up after half past three. Now, I think I'd maybe better do the audio description myself for Julie, our chair, because she is dressed up to go to the inauguration. And as befits the elder of our organisation, she's dressed up as Bernie Sanders. So she's even more hunkered down in her chair than usual. She has her nice, warm padded blue coat on which is okay. actually incredibly like Bernie's it has to be said apart from being a slightly different colour she's got um they're not quite smittens although we might talk about smittens a little bit later when we come to art club but they are hippie mittens which surprisingly I had anyway her mask unlike the famous meme of Bernie is actually over her head more like a hairband but that's she really wanted to have it over her mouth but I did point out we needed to be able to hear her so 
here we are from East London and the West Midlands, still undefeated by COVID-19 and looking forward to an hour of chat and disability art, finishing up with a musical contribution. Well, in fact, I shall get you to introduce that just quickly now, Robin. Here yeah, we we'll be finishing, sorry, we'll be finishing with um, a song from Sam Cooper. Uh, Sam is a disabled musician. Uh, he comes from just outside Telford in a, in a wonderfully named place of Jacksonville, which you wouldn't expect to find in Shropshire. Um, and he's a fantastic guitarist and great songwriter. I wonder if the US Jacksonville was indeed named after Shropshire. Oh, who knows? <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> <laughs> Quite possibly, an awful lot were. Um, I just wanted to say very quickly in tribute to Bernie Sanders, I'm not just, um, you know, making a mockery of him for no reason. Uh, I, I was genuine, I am, and I continue to be genuinely impressed at the fact that up to date he's raised $1.8 million for various good causes in Vermont. And the first amount that he raised, I think it was something like $1,600 or $1,200, uh, actually went to a youth LGBTQI uh, organization. Um, and I thought that was extremely appropriate because we're kicking off LGBTQI History Month. Uh, and I thought that that's why that's why I'd have got such respect for that man because he also managed to up the amount of money that he's been raising by um, making sure that the big, the big companies, big corporations using his images are giving, they're donating their cut to the various causes that he's supporting. Yeah, that is absolutely fantastic. And come Monday, when we talk about photography and film, I think we might as well talk about memes because that's something that we haven't done before. I so, was, I was, sorry, I always think of them as memes. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, we can definitely put that conversation <laughs> off until Monday. So coming up in a minute, we had our special edition of the show on Wednesday for Holocaust Memorial Day. That show remains online. It's a great resource. Thanks to all of you for your personal contributions. And thank you very much indeed to Renee Wallen, a social media consultant who was also part of the show, and Rachel Century, one of the Holocaust Memorial Day organisers who took time out of her busy schedule to record an interview on Tuesday night. So like you say, that remains online, but it means we have a couple of regular items to reschedule today, including our Clockwork Paralympics, which will be coming up after the break. First, we're going to go over to Julie for some introductions to the Pop-Up Poetry Club. The Pop-Up Poetry Club is part of our club's programme, and you can find out lots of details about that under the 2021 programme on our website, www.together2012.org.uk. Julie, can you just give me a minute while I remember what I'm saying? <laughs> Oh, I see she's galloping ahead to read a poet, still sulking like Bernie. But unfortunately, one of my impairments is very little short term memory. So um, as you can imagine, a live show is a bit of a challenge at the best of times. So our club's program, the full details are on our website. You can join in in two ways. The art club is now running by Zoom. And so monthly are the Photography and Film Club and the Dance on Screen Club. It was very ha handy that our dance club already worked, not only entirely for the screen, but also in masks. So that takes place on the fourth Monday of the month. Photographers and Filmmakers is on the second Monday. But on a Wednesday, we move over to the telephone for our pop-up poetry club. So what happens is we phone you before 10.30 at our cost. We add you to a group call at 10.30 over a cup of tea and a biscuit. People share some poems they've found and read out loud. They do some voice exercises. 
they go off and write on a theme and they come back and share their work. So it's just like we were running before, but you have to bring your own tea and coffee. The plus side is you don't have to be in East London. So if you're interested in joining in with the Pop-Up Poetry Club, do send us an email at info at together2012.org.uk and I'm going to pop up that address at the bottom of the screen in a minute. But first, Julie, what was this week's theme? Musical instruments. Um, we had a moderately sized group, but it was so interesting, as always, how the different perspectives and the different styles of poetry were um, were shown during the course of the club. Um, it makes it very varied and Actually, you know, it's, it's just so interesting. A lot of the guys who don't have access to the internet will read their own poems, um, poems that they've written in advance. But they, they also contribute sort of um, on the second part from their own, um, their own, uh, sorry, I'm a bit distracted, uh, so f f from their own, um, their own, their own, um, <laughs> that's the word portfolio is the word i'm looking for oh my goodness i'm so bernie sanders um <laughs> forgive <laughs> forgive um but it's it's great and uh so we've got it we've got a selection haven't we of of the poems to read out we have i don't because they came in rather late have printouts and that's why you were getting distracted because the ones i'm going to read i've just had to yank put up on the on screen, the screen. Yeah, for sure but we're going to start with a poem by you yes if, i might have to take my mitten off for a minute <laughs> uh, <clears throat> um I got I got really thrown by the whole concept of writing a poem about musical instruments because I couldn't find a favourite one and I couldn't find one to focus on, so it's all a bit of a mishmash. Musical instruments. Does the lonely harmonica lose any worth if it plays for the sadness of the souls, echoing through the winds of a lonely song across the plains, a fire burning against the darkness of the night, Stars shine bright and the sound haunts the listeners as they pause and share this call to stay on their paths. A single drum with a lonely beat, is it a call to battle or to retreat? Or does the drummer pull the pulse of the planet to the surface to share in the day? A call to prayer gathering the hearts of the listeners in quiet contemplation, marking the end of a life, a new beginning, the beat of that which is gone and that to come. Solitary sounds poignant in their power to touch the souls of the listeners when joined with others become a chorus, louder, more demanding, insistent not to be ignored. The beat so loud is felt as the air shakes. The harmonies created call a different tune, but not in discord, overlapping the loudest, compatible in its completeness. The orchestra demands to be heard, insists that we listen. The symphony of many sounds creates a harmony that pleases many, but the sound that stays is the single voice. The wail of the harmonica, singing the song of lonely nights and troubled souls. The beat of the drum, echoing the marching feet, joined with a common cause. The solitary piper, marking the passing of time and the laying to rest and a solo violin, violin stretching our hearts as we long for the stars. That was beautiful, Judy, and I'm just blown away by the fact that you also managed to do that in one morning. Let me go over to the West Midlands now. Josh, what have you got for us and who from? We have a poem called Guitar uh, from Glory Sengo. So, when I was playing guitar at a concert, Steno was singing into his microphone, and the rest of the group were singing with Steno. They were singing together, and they danced, and they stopped. Steno was pretending, jumping, and everyone started laughing. That's very sweet. This one is from Taylor Henville, and it's called Music Lessons. Music lessons at school were always strange. Keyboards lined up against the wall as though in detention. They were the only instruments we were allowed to play. Huddled away in the corner, 
in view but out of reach. Drum kits, guitars, acoustic and electric, violins and trumpets with a layer of dust on their surfaces, untouched, out of reach. We were only allowed to play the keyboards, but that always ended too soon. I wonder if the other instruments were jealous that the keyboards got to play a quick but fleeting tune. Thank like you, that. Taylor. <laughs> I absolutely loved that. And while I've got this up on the screen, I am just going to go over to Dawn Barber's poem, The Drum. Bang, bang on the drum. Time to work your hands a lot. People hear your piece of music. Let it all out. Show them what you can do. Give them something to hear. Bang, bang. Do it again. Let the drum be your friend. Music. What a joy. Shout it to the stars and moon. Let your music be heard because the drum wants you to play. It is your friend for today and evermore. And there's also, just following on from that from Crystal Peasy, this is called Drum Kit. I have a drum kit, which I haven't played yet. I'm looking forward to playing. I'm waiting for the right time because it seems like my time goes very quick and seems so much to do in so little time. And the time is very fast and you cannot go back. Time is very short and a lot of things can happen. Some of them are sad, some of them are happy. It's important to know about all the good things and all the bad things because life is too short. Thank you, Crystal. And I th is it five? I think we've got two more over in the West Midlands. One no, more? Just, just one more. Lovely. So that's, um, well, I'll leave you to introduce it. I'm hoping this is from Blake because it's not titled. Um, <laughs> it looks like a Blake poem. So this is I'm from sure Blake. Is. I was going to say the full name is Blake Jarrett Gibbons. Okay. So music opens your emotions. Sounds open a vibe. We have many a choice of instruments to which can build a vibe and a beat, a melody and a music is made. Is there a favourite instrument to choose from? Not for me personally. Different instrument, different genre, also a different community. I think back to pre-Covid, when you could go out and you could walk around some parts of London full of music. Take, for example, Camden. You have a small area with venues playing across so many genres and so many instruments. From the blues kitchen with the vibe of positivity through the high beat, often fast flowing music that brings out the blues in you. Piano and drums played between live performances. A trip round to the jazz club. This may be just a bit more relaxed with more of a range of percussion and strings. The sounds even from outside give such a vibe saying, come on in. Let these sounds take you away. <clears throat> Only got to go across the road to the underworld and world's end. Rock and roll central. Fast to slow bangs of drums with a guitar playing through emotions almost as if being played on your heartstrings. Piano notes giving a balance within these sounds. Only up the way is where Amy Wayne Winehouse lived and first started performing as well in the places listed. Many groups of people some drunk, some perfectly sober, and some slightly more professional singing famous songs. Old standards taken to fit thousands of performers, and they will play away to ho however can be fitted in. Perhaps the best instrument, just maybe, is not a man-made instrument. Maybe it's Mother Nature. She makes sounds and music without her making us, and without nature we couldn't have the sounds we have. Drum solos from bass drums to the banging of a hand on an old shoebox, playing of strings from a rock star's guitar with that ooh perfect note every time. To that little ukulele you started practicing on as a child or the harp that takes you already to a calmer state just by it being in your presence and grasp. The blowing of a trumpet or the tune through a saxophone or the whistle of the breeze around you as you walk down the street or flow of water onto a beach or down a waterfall. I do not have a favourite instrument, nor a favourite genre. I just let it guide me in life. Let sounds give you a vibe, and music, let it open your emotions, just like lyrics and poetry can another person's. The vibes they give 
reading open to your vibe. Take a beat to it and a few sounds and it may open your emotions too. Thank you. Paul. Oh, that's great. And thank you, Robin, for reading it so well. So in a minute, I'm going to pop up a picture on the screen and Josh is going to swap with Tracy Surgeoner for our art club segment. So let me start doing that now. Can I just say the, the theme for next week is a frosty morning. A frosty morning. Wonderful. So I'm just going to do a bit of audio description while they're changing over. So we're looking at a photograph of a glass jar, like a, gla like a glass jam jar that's been washed and cleaned out. And it's been decorated with strips of tissue paper and ribbon and some lovely little glittery things. What do we call those, Julie? Is it rhinestones? They're like diagonal rhinestones. And that's sitting on a worktop with some scissors. We can see somebody sitting just behind with their hands folded. And in this segment, we're going to look at, yeah, just some easy craft activities that you can do at home. And also look at some of the things that our art club did this morning in their still life session. So let me take the jar away. And welcome, Tracy Surgeoner. Yes, you just need to move that monitor a bit, Robin. Yeah, that'd be easier. Hold on. Sorry, guys. <laughs> We're always having to do this. And our audio description should now include the fact that we now have a tabby cat sitting on Bernie Sanders' lap, which I don't think has actually happened in a meme as yet. <laughs> welcome, Tracy. So we've looked at Hello. And we've had some audio description. How long did it take you to make that? Um, probably like half an hour or something. But that's because I'm used to doing things like that. But, you know, it was fun. I enjoyed it. But it's still an activity that you could do within an hour, isn't it? So it's a really oh, definitely, time yeah. to learn. Yeah, I liked it as well because, and I know you. There's two that you're going to show us because there's so many things you can do with them, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's all that right. storage. <laughs> <laughs> and here are the real jars held up by Robin holding pens and pencils and things. And I, I would have thought also the battery operated lights inside. Mm. With that tissue paper, it looks like it would really light up beautifully. Yeah, that would be really nice. Actually, it would. It would send the colours around the room that would be I haven't tried that I might try that well I'll tell you what I'll do let me pop it up on the screen again but not mm. solo and then we can just talk about it there we go yeah so that's the first one I made and basically I just used a jar you know an empty sauce jar that I had in the house and because I've normally got quite a lot of arty things it's just simple pieces of tissue paper that um, I stuck on with prick stick, just glued the end of the tissue paper, put the jar on its side and rolled it uh, onto the jar, which kept it nice and straight. And then, oh, that was such a clever idea. Do yeah. you know, fun, I'd wondered what glue you'd use because, of course, anything like PVA, like a wet glue, is going to mm. make the tissue paper the colour run, isn't it? It never occurred to me with prick, but of yeah. course... It's very obvious when you say it, but I would have been trying to paste things and then put them on <laughs> rather than pasting the jar. Yeah. No, print stick is perfect for that. It's very thin. You don't need a lot of glue. And basically stuck one end and then just ran the print stick down the length of the um, tissue and rolled the jar towards me, which helps keep it in a nice straight line. Um, overlap them slightly so that when you – because you look inside – and then you've got the rainbow on the inside as well, which I thought was quite nice. Um, and then, again, just did it with a uh, print stick and paper. A little bit of ribbon. I'd got some sort of gauzy-type ribbon that made a little bow out of that. And um, little diamantes. I've always got diamantes. A little sparkle. Um, yeah, and I've used that one. Um, if my assistant would like to hold it up. I put my makeup brushes in it. 
because I do like a bit of sparkle, so I thought that looks quite nice in my bedroom. Oh, it looks lovely. Do you know, I saw it before, but of course, in my head, it it wasn't for makeup, it was paintbrushes, because that's just how boring I am. But let me just <laughs> stick the other one up on the screen. I'll just yeah, and off. then I thought, yeah, I thought to myself, right, I'm going to give myself a challenge, like I said last week, let's use stuff that has come through the door. So I thought, right, what can I use? And um, we had a magazine through. I don't know if I'm allowed to um, say the, the yeah. well-known um, car providers to lots of disabled people sent me their free magazine through the door. And I thought, hmm, I'll go for a car collage. So uh, again, just cut out the cars that um, I like the colours of, randomly um, collage them, used a bit of um, the trim off a different page. I like the, the colour. It was on the cookery page, I think. Um, and made a little bow out of the paper. And I thought, pencils? But that looked nice, you know. You've got some like, really into the cars. Yeah, it's just incredibly effective. And as a decoupage technique, mm. which is just about pasting things onto, onto other things, it's so clever because just by cutting out, you know, different cars but they're all cars mm. you've already got a theme haven't you you don't yeah. actually need to do anything else i, th yeah. I, th I think the the uh, background of the new york sort of street <laughs> scene works very very well with it actually it's very <laughs> topical yes the new york street scene is actually is it your tabletop or is it a worktop it's actually um it's higher than a little coffee table um because then I, in my electric wheelchair i'm quite high so it was a table we had for the garden and it folds down um, and it was just our coffee table for the garden so I could reach the coffee. But it also makes a great little uh, workspace for me. And actually, because Joshua said to me, Joshua took the photos because he's just a star. Um, and he said, do you want to be in the picture? I said, no, no, I don't need to be in the picture. Not knowing that he was photographing my tummy. <laughs> and I said, I didn't mean to be. And then he could just focus on the jar. So I realised he was taking me. I'd of course put my beautiful face in there as well. Well, I had some really nice full feature ones as well, but because I've got so many other things to try and program into the um, system, yeah, just picked out the final items. Yeah. So we'll be putting these inspiring pictures up on our highlights and links page. You can find that under the main Together Unlocked TV page on our website, www.together2012.org.uk. I see the tabby has gone, thank goodness. But um, you can also find details of all of the animals that are likely to wander into our shows in the same pull down menu under our animal hosts. So I'm just going to show, you know, do stay there, Tracy. And I'm just going to take this one off and show you some of the things that the art club did this morning in their still life session. So this one is by a young woman called Sophia. And what Sophia's done is just taken three different felt tip colours, purple, yellow and green, and done some really, I think, lovely kind of different kind of representations and patterns. I believe this was a still life where there was a vase of flowers and then there was another item next to the still life. In fact, we'll probably put the still life photo up on highlights and links as well in case you want to have a go. So that was Sophia's. This next one is Pamela Hillier. And um, again, I think that's in felt tip, although I'm not 100% sure. There's a lovely representation of the vase in two different kinds of green. And then the flowers. I, I really liked this one, I have to say. So let's take that one off. And... This one, I think, is Glory Sengo's. And Glory's the first person who's also got the other little dish in. So he's, ta again, taken felt tip and he's done very sort of firm outlines of the vase and the glass dish in green. And then he's got purple and yellow kind of very representational flowers that work very well indeed. And then finally, 
This is Crystal Pieces and Crystal's used paint and really, really filled up the page. They've all been using A3 sketchbooks and Crystal's got a real riot of blues and greens and yellows and purples going on. So um, well done to the whole of the art club. The art club would, well, I say usually, of course, the art club usually meets on zoom before 2020 the friday session was a drawing and painting session and our art club sessions were two hours long but we really feel an hour is as long as anybody can cope on zoom so in our drawing and painting sessions people would come along and do whatever they wanted and they'd just be able to choose all sorts of different drawing and painting materials and different papers and canvases and experiment but what we now do like i say is offer a still life so that people have got something to copy and something to share and just to make it a bit easier to work with what people have got at home. And then on Tuesday from 11 to 12, the art club where we would have been doing more craft based activities, but also crafts that you can use within fine art. We now have a make and natter session for an hour where you can either join in with an activity using things you're likely to have at home or bring the work along that you're already doing just to show it to other people and be a bit sociable. So that's the art club. Now I'm going to pop on a short video that's going to tell you a little bit more about our Join In From Home programme as advertised on our website. Together 2012 is running a Join In From Home programme from our website together2012.org.uk. Click on the link at the top of the page, join in from home, to go straight to the main page where you have a wide range of accessible, inclusive, creative activities, mostly using things that you would already have at home. At the top of the page and throughout the pages, you will also see videos in British Sign Language to translate the site for deaf people. These videos can also be useful if you have difficulties reading and you simply want to hear more of the content. The Join In From Home programme is based on the activities that we would usually be running in East London. So for example, we have an art club which usually operates on a Tuesday with craft-based activities and on a Friday morning for drawing and painting. Here you can join in with the Arts Club's Hands Project and celebrate your uniqueness and membership of the human race. There are full instructions on the linked page here. But essentially, we invite you to draw around your hand on a piece of card. It could be an old cereal packet. Cut the shape out turn it over and decorate it with anything you would like to do. It could be paints, crayons, glitter, collage, beads, leaves, anything you can think of. Photograph your hand or hands and send it to us at tv at together2012.org.uk. We'll add it to our video installation and share it on social media. Our music club usually meets on the first Friday of each month. We have an open mic session and we invite everybody to play along with percussion instruments. So here you can learn how to make your own percussion instruments from recycled materials. And you can also join in a percussion workshop from last summer in terms of carnival percussion. So. These three instruments are used most often in carnival. We have a shaker and a go-go and a hand drum. So this is how to make a recycled shaker, a recycled a go-go and a recycled hand drum. You can also, if you're technically minded, make your own tactile sound instrument. This does require a few simple electronics, but is a very interesting and exciting project as part of our Vibrofusion ongoing work. You can also listen with Together. We have Spotify playlists created by Robin Sergener, also known as our TV presenter, Angry Fish. And we also have two classical music playlists from Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra, including one that's uniquely suited to people who are feeling very unwell. 
And thank you again to Tracy Surgener and welcome back, Josh Surgener. So on a Wednesday, we would usually have our Clockwork Paralympics where our teddy bears compete for the right to wear a medal. Ours competes for the right to wear a gold plastic medal, the only one we have in the house, and the Surgeoners compete to take one of their many family medals out of a box and put it on their teddy. Now, actually, I should start off by saying, well, no, I won't. I'll keep that to something for the weekend. <laughs> Here is our teddy bear, which is, in fact, an owl. It is an owl because in a minute, under something for the weekend, we're going to talk to you about the great garden bird watch, or indeed it might not be called quite that because Julie's going to be talking about it. But we thought, although we're really taking part in the international virtual bear hunt with our teddies, the surgeoners often have a non-teddy teddy. So we have owl teddy. What's and we have, because he was so disappointed and upset last week, uh, we have the return of the Millennium <laughs> Bear to uh, attempt to, um, yeah, secure as a medal. We haven't won one, I don't think, since about November. Oh, sorry, don't know what happened there. But so that's just more of our. Yeah, still doesn't want to do it. Goodness, <laughs> is, it, is it as long as that? Oh my goodness me! Who would have thought? <laughs> So I have to explain to anyone who's just joined us, particularly on this slightly anarchic Friday afternoon. Yes, it's an entirely a game of chance. So before I put it up, do you want the right side of the screen, which is my left hand, or do you want the other side of the screen? The other Not side. So screen. we're going for the left side of the screen, the one you release with your right hand this week. Okie doke. So give me a minute to pop it up and then we'll get Josh to do some commentary. Okay. So we have our two competitors lined up. I believe we're back with uh, Caterpillars this week. We've got green uh, for Birmingham on the left and orange for London on the right. And they are off and away. And they both appear to be veering uh, away from a straight line. The orange seems to have centred up a little bit more. Green, we are just hopeless at the moment. Yeah, it's uh, it's not not going well for Birmingham twenty twenty two at the moment. Um, in in both Clockwork Paralympics and anything else, potentially. <laughs> Although orange does again to have appeared to have uh, veered off towards the side uh, to finish up. That is another victory for London 2012. <sighs> oh, you're muted, Jew. I said goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm very sorry about that. Yes. Yeah, so I held up that orange and I, I grinned because I thought, I bet they chose the other side. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Just, anyway, just random, I, I know it's random bad luck, isn't it? But consistently, yes. never mind. <laughs> On the other hand, I seem to remember when we won so consistently, there was very uh, <laughs> allegations of cheating abound and all. So, yeah, I, well, I think that's because you always choose the side, so there's room for confusion. <laughs> Them. I don't think there was any confusion about that. So I'm going to start something for the weekend by telling you what I'm dressed up to go out to stay in to do, which is to jump straight onto the Welcome Trust YouTube channel at four o'clock to watch deaf and disabled artists talking about making work now. So that's an hour on YouTube from four to five. It's being led by Jamie Hale. We were having a discussion about what Jamie had done for us in the past. Um, and Jamie is going to be joined by five other disabled artists to talk about their work. They're going to talk for 45 minutes and then they're going to take questions if you're able to get onto Slido. If you haven't pre-booked, you probably can't. But just briefly, because there's such an interesting range of artists, there's Amelia Cavallo, who's a blind theatre practitioner. 
There's Miss Jackie, who has most definitely performed with us before, who's a wonderful performance poet. There's Keith Salmon, who was born in Essex, studied in Shrewsbury and Falmouth, and now works from his studio in Scotland. So we wouldn't have much chance of seeing him usually. Then there's a younger artist called Emma Selwyn, whose work includes My Hands and Feet Are Wiggling and Binaries Be Gone, and not F asterisk, 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 kin, sorry, at Soho Theatre in 2019. And last but by no means least is Syme Kid, who's the, what, the UK's first deaf music producer. And um, I believe Syme Kid was almost certainly in, was it called 111, the film that we were talking about at the Unlimited Festival? Or is it so, here now? What next here now? Yeah, so I think really and truly, as we said, this flowering of disability art just continues. We've had the beautiful Octopus Festival, our Making History Together Festival and Dada Fest before Christmas. Then we had Unlimited and now we have the Welcome Trust. So keep it all coming. Julie, do you want to tell us about the Garden Bird Watch? What is it called properly? It's the RSPB. Uh, which is the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds. It's been around for a, a wee while now. Oh, have I got time to give you a quick factoid? Please, yes. It was set up by feminists who were concerned about the number of birds that were being used as plumage in fashion, to the extent that at one point in the 19th century, people were wearing entire dead birds. So it started off as the Protection of Plumage Society, where you could only wear feathers if they came from ostriches. Boom, boom. <laughs> what I they? was astonished. Yeah, no, I think that's lovely. What a lovely history. Um, they, every year, do an annual RSPB Big Garden Bird Watch. Um, and it's an opportunity for us to sit in our, on a balcony or sit in our windows. Um, or indeed, if you're fortunate enough to have a garden, to sit in your garden if you're able to do so uh, for an hour and to count the birds that you see. They provide um, a list of birds, so all you have to do really is tick them off. Um, and at the end of that hour, you submit the totals, um, either by post or online, um, to the RSPB, and then they create a national profile of what our bird life in our gardens looks like. Um, it's it's amazing. It's worth going back over previous years, but you've got until I think the 19th of February to submit it. But this is a lovely time to get out and start to see what's going on. I've also been very quickly been watching uh, Winter Watch on the BBC, and I do recommend anything that gives you a, an immediate connection with, with the world outside, wildlife, birds, whatever. Do take it because it just it it helps us to cope with what's going on. Well, yes, and as with last year, as nature returns, we will be returning to nature photography, talking about it on a Monday and inviting you to share your pictures. If you can get as many nature shots as we've managed from a backyard in Canning Town, you can get a nature shot anywhere, including out of a window. I'm just going to do my other recommendation because then I can hand over to the West Midlands because I know you've got lots to recommend, which is something that was launched yesterday and it's called the Great British Art Exhibition. And it's really, really simple. You produce a picture however you want and you put it in your window. It was launched by the sculptor Anthony Gormley and um, himself and another group of artists are choosing themes because the idea, of course, is we do one and then we do a different exhibition and we do a different exhibition. Or you could just keep adding pictures depending on how big your windows are. But the current theme is animals, not a million miles away from birds. So that might be the animal or animals in your home. It might be the animals outside. It might be animals you've seen in the past. It might be imaginary animals. But um, get those pictures coming. And we would love to see a copy of your picture. And if it's safe to take a photo from outside of your picture in the window, we would absolutely love to see that. But now over to the West Midlands. OK. Uh, I've got two things. Uh for this weekend. The first one is a show called Blown Away, uh, which is a competition show on 
Netflix, um, which is glass blowing competition. Um, the second season was released last Friday. Um, and the, so there's two seasons on, on Netflix. The first one came out, I think, in 2019. I don't know. I still think it's March of last year. So the, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it came out uh, in 2019. And then, yeah, the second season um, released last week. So me and Mum have been um, kind of working our way through that. There's only 10 episodes. Um, and I think we're on episode nine. I mean, it's just really enjoyable. Um, I don't really know anything about glass blowing going into it other than kind of what it was. Um, and it is truly kind of amazing in some of the things that they can make out of glass it is incredible um so yeah that's a that's a recommendation so that's on netflix uh, and then the other one i had was uh this evening is the first event i guess of the um world indoor athletics tour um there's going to be five throughout the year the first one's in germany and it starts tonight um at seven you can watch that on bbc sport or on the red button uh and you've got kind of lots of British athletes. Dean Rasha Smith is competing, um, and a few other British athletes. It'd just be nice to watch some some live sport for 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 once. It's free. And actually, can you? I know you've just got a little bit of sports reporting to do, haven't you? Yes. The uh, people who've been watching us for a while know that I've been very keen on the Vendee Globe uh, around the world, solo, non-stop uh, sailing. Um, competition and it's finishing it started to finish on Wednesday evening um, and uh, Damien Seguin who's a four times no a two times gold medalist a Paralympian uh, came in he crossed the line sixth now his place is adjusted according to various time time awards etc but he sailed right up there with everybody else who had all the foils and all the special things that were going on in their boats. He sailed a 13 year old plain daggerboard boat and he got there by sheer skill and competence. He has, he has completely changed sailing for uh, not just Paralympians, but for disabled sailors. He's done an amazing thing. Perhaps we can talk about him a little bit more next week, Josh. Well, very okay. possibly in the sports section on Wednesday. But in the meantime, we will re-put up the Vendee Globe link on our highlights and links page for today's show. What else have you got for us, guys? Okay, I've got a couple. Um, the first one is something a bit like uh, the welcome event that you might want to jump onto very quickly. Um, it's called the 48 Hour Film Challenge. Um, it's been launched by Northampton Film Festival uh, and it starts at six o'clock tonight. Basically at six o'clock tonight um, on Facebook, they will launch a theme and then anyone has then got 48 hours or basically until six o'clock on Sunday evening to have up online a film that, I, that they have made that fits the theme that they've been asked. And then it is judged by um, some luminaries from the film world um, or, whether, uh, you know, um, and, and it just looks really exciting. And if, you know, we, we talk a lot about filmmaking and it's kind of like, well, you don't, this isn't about what you can set up, how you can do this, you know, how flash you can make it. This is about how quickly can you pull an idea together? So that's, six o'clock tonight i mean obviously if you don't get to it till tomorrow morning it just gives you less time if you want to make a film so that's kind of really good and i've kind of if anybody does take up that challenge um from our viewers then do send us in anything you submit um and then the second thing is, is quite handy in in the sense of um as we were talking about earlier it, it, this this monday i think is the beginning of uh, or certainly february of lg BGTQI month um and uh, history month and should i just clarify it started as lgbt history month it was set up by sue sanders and her campaign schools out which is a very long-running campaign to challenge homophobia in education you know for the sake of the kids clearly you know not to mention anything else it seems in a way still to be called LGBT History Month, but LGBT History Month, LGBT plus History Month. But at regard where I'm the co-chair, which is the National 
LGBTQI plus disabled people's organization, we kind of might refer to it so to other things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all of that information properly in my head, given that I'm giving about 20 talks next month to celebrate the month. And um, we'll be talking more about it on Monday. So thanks for that, Robin. OK, and so and, and the relevance being for the, my something to do, not just for this weekend, but actually I think it looks like a fantastic resource um, is a web website called SciArc. Again, the, the link will be up spelled C-Y-A-R-K. Um, and it's a new digital. Well, set up in 2003 but it's it's a a, 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 a series of digital three-dimensional tours of historical cultural sites so not just culture not not just places but things where places where things have happened um and and kind of on the home page as it, it scrolls through a number of things um but one of the things that comes up is that there is is a, a really informative piece on stonewall um, and, 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 it, and it's filmed in Stonewall in Christopher Square, um, and it shows like the it's got the it says the images of the statues and the pub in the background, um, and and you know then gives a kind of history around it. So, um, but so, so from that point of view, really really good anyway. But just it's beautiful. It's kind of like getting a National Geographic magazine, which always had those really really in depth high quality photos. And putting them into a website and and then putting all the information with voiceovers and stuff around it i be honest i didn't check closed captioning but it's definitely got voiceover so um but yeah re really really good and I, I think so many places you could visit in the world and it's just expanding well yes and i think in that specific case as well it's all about home education isn't it if you're struggling or giving up on the national curriculum <laughs> There's going to be lots of resources linked to the LGBT History Month website, which we will put up tonight, but also tell you much more about in the future. What we did for Black History Month is we featured artists of colour throughout the month. We're going to be doing that through February. So look out for some truly fabulous disabled artists. Just got a quick minute or two. Is there anything anybody else is desperate to recommend? You're supposed to be grumbly anyway. I was gonna, um, and we can talk about it more on uh, Monday for both things we did at the weekend and in terms of apps. Um, but last weekend, I played Zoom Pictionary um, using a website called, I believe it was Random Word Generator. Um, so you select the game. So we did Pictionary, but it's got like catchphrase and taboo, kind of celebrity, guess who I am. Uh, you select kind of the difficulty and then it just generates words. Um, so yeah, if people are kind of wanting to play Pictionary over Zoom, which has a whiteboard, you can just draw on Zoom using your phone or your computer, uh, then yeah, you can use that to generate words. Wow, I never knew that about the whiteboard. So yes, let's come back to that on Monday as well. On Monday, as Josh mentioned, we have App Date where we look at arty apps. That's a feature that started because we were involved in piloting the NHS COVID-19 app, which I believe is the most downloaded COVID-19 app in the world. Yes, well, we still need quite a lot of other things before that's going to get us out of the situation in which we find ourselves. Fortunately, on Monday, we also relax with Awa Jagne at the end of the show. Awa is a member of our theatre company, well, our associate theatre company, Act Up Newham, and she has her own yoga channel, Relax with Awa. And plenty more, lots of photography and film to talk about. And then, of course, later in the week, as always, we've got the Clockwork Paralympics and poetry back on a Wednesday. The sports and gaming report will be making a welcome comeback and so through to another week. Have a fantastic weekend. Stay creative, stay home and stay well. I'm going to hand over again to Robin just to reintroduce the live music, well, recorded live music with which we will be playing the show out. OK, so uh, you're in, a, in a few moments, you are going to be listening to and watching a 
a video from an artist called Sam Cooper and his song um, Autism Blues. Sam um, played with me in Angry Fish when I when I released Black Thursday. I don't know, 2016, I think it was. Um, I decided I want I wanted a band only of disabled musicians to kind of give the truth around the, all the songs that were in there. Um, and and some was some some Sam was someone that um, came out of the woodwork as a disabled musician. And I was like, this guy's amazing. So he's he played in the band for well, basically up until COVID. Um, uh, um, and he's continuing to and he's always played his own material. Um, and so this is a really great song from Sam. bleed from my mind yeah man every day I wake up these thoughts say bleed from my mind oh god have some mercy I got so much to say but no direction to choose I got the outside flip side artists and blues and some nights I stay up tonight's nearly turned to day yes well some nights I stay up tonight's nearly turned to day and then I wake up for another round of artists and blues. He's outside, flip side, artists and blues. Step back up of my blue suede shoes. I got the outside, flip side, artists and blues. If I have nothing to gain, nothing to lose. But these outside, flip side, artists and blues. 